So now I am really happy to introduce uh, the next talk uh, by Johan Brichot because this is a new company in Belgium and I want to see more of them. And that's cool because uh, they are from the, Universi the Freie University Brussels and we are working together with them, so that's, that's cool. I'm really happy. Yep, thank you, Steph. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy as well to be able to present you uh, the first project of our uh, new Belgian startup company doing small talk. Um, those of you who know me before, I've been doing uh, small talk for 10 years in academia, and um, I'm now changing hats and uh, started this company. Uh, so I'm moving away from academia completely on my own in the wild in the industry. So what is this? It's a next plan. It's a software built in Smalltalk with Seaside. And it's uh, jointly created with the major uh, cultural center Vorat in uh, Ghent in Belgium. So we did an agile team there. So the company we created is Inceptive. So what is next plan? First of all, well, it's a collaborative event planning tool. It's aimed at uh, event organizers, uh, things like cultural centers, uh, festival organizers, uh, museums, and all the sort of all sizes. Um, so they're able to create and manage all their uh, event planning uh, in there. Uh, basically aimed at planning all the resources they need for every event. So it's been a... Uh, an agile team experience in the sense that uh, our company, Inceptive, we were actually um, responsible for doing the development in Smalltalk. And they were uh, the guys, the domain experts, they knew what they wanted. So they hired, they actually, well, they paid for the product, of course. And um, they did the user interaction design and the user interface design. So all the nice, fancy screenshots, uh, demo you will see. The visual interface is theirs, but everything that works very fluently behind it, it's ours. Um, so what is it? It's event planning, resource planning associated to these events, um, management of it, so if you have conflicting uh, schedules and so on, or contact management, um, planning, billing, reporting, and so on. I see that a part of the slide is falling off, so I hope I don't have too much uh, things to the right. So it's, of course, a, a seaside application. It's targeted at modern browsers. Uh, we're able to leave out Internet Explorer in this case uh, because it's really targeted at an enterprise, so we can actually force them to use a, a good browser. Um, it's built and developed entirely in Faro. It's also running in Faro at the moment, so all the uh, iteration versions, what we mean. So we have actually produced up until now, during the period of one year, 24 different versions for them to test, so every time adding new functionality, and those have all been running in Faro. Uh, using the goods database. Of course, the major uh, Smalltalk framework we are using is Seaside. And now, very recently, we are also porting it to Gemstone, which uh, I will talk about a bit later as well. So, what will I say in this talk? I cannot really, well, I can present you parts of, of Nextplan application. It took me two, uh, two hours to explain every detail. So, um, what I want to show in this talk, that Smalltalk and Seaside are really uh, good and very promising, well, not only promising, they are there, um, really an impressive platform to build highly dynamic web applications that really look like desktop applications. So we try to move away from the traditional experience you have as a web application user, but really have a running application inside your browser that more or less handles or more or less is able to give you the user interaction you expect from a desktop application. I will dive into some of the details, so I will have a couple of demos so you see the working of the application, but I will dive into some of the challenges we really experienced because all the rest is like standard small talk and seaside development. We've been doing uh, some updates on the local Ajax updates. I will talk to you about uh, what that actually means, you will see. Object-oriented databases, we've been using three different object-oriented databases throughout the development, just moving on uh, from one to the other for several reasons. And we've been using SVG and AJAX updates in Seaside. And then, of course, I will talk a bit about how we do testing and the porting to Gemstone. So this is, uh, where is my mouse? There is my mouse. So this is the calendar interface of uh, Nextplan. So if you log in, you basically see this uh, interface, which is an interface of horizontally, uh, you see 
all the rooms in your cultural center, and then you have the dates. Events are scheduled as the white uh, squares in the middle. What I want to show here is that all these things are very much related. Here we have an event, the film festival, which is actually distributed over several locations. But every uh, square in the calendar is actually a separate box, a separate event. Now the things are very much related in the sense that if you move over them, they actually are shown to be uh, related here. Uh, Pop-up box comes up here. Yeah. It's hard to keep my finger on this trackpad. So, and this gives you information about this event. So that's something they want to give them some information about this event. But what I show you is okay. What I actually can do is you can classify different kinds of events. And what basically means is that the color changes. Now it's very difficult to see. You see the border of the screen. It actually changes color here. So they have different kinds of events, external rents, internal rents, whatever. Um, in place editing, you see the film festival here. Well, let's call this just a film festival too. You see that we have to update all places around. That's basically my intention here. So I, I just for the fun of it, let me add a new one. You can see that you can do actually do drag and drop everywhere around and everything. Um, another thing, there are detailed schedules for an event. Detailing schedules also have an impact on how they show here. So the basic message I show you here and through this interface is that you have an object-oriented application where you can change in different windows, different parts of your data model, and you have to pro propagate changes everywhere around. That was a, a bit of a challenge to achieve without doing a full page refresh, because a full page refresh took some time. So, of course, Seaside is very good. Seaside allows us to program this just the object-oriented way. Every cell in this calendar is a separate seaside component. Same thing for these information bubbles you've seen popping up, the schedule, the detailed information about an event, and so on. All these things are components which are interrelated. They show data. If some part of the data changes somewhere, you have updates to be done at particular parts in your interface. So what we designed was that every operation you do inside this interface will actually trigger the same update mechanism, the AJAX update mechanism, which will basically do a component re-rendering of the components that need to be updated. That's cool because you can just do this very simple. Yeah, just do a global AJAX update in Seaside. We take every cell, just the one component which contains all the cells and these information bubbles that pop up, and we just say, well, do this one update. That was easy and simple because the thing you can just easily implement. Uh, it's basically just that piece of code there, two lines. Uh, after every operation, you just trigger that, and you do the entire update. That's easy, and it's universally applicable. Up until the point where our users started creating 30 different rooms and scrolled down the calendar to see about 20 weeks, and then he added just one event, and he had to wait like six seconds for the screen to refresh. Not good. <laughs> huh? um, so it re-renders too much because it was just that one cell which had to be re-rendered. Huh? So it wastes also in-place editing advantage. Everything you do in place, you just want to have a local update. And most of the time, your updates are pretty local. So what you do in an object-oriented application normally is if you have components and you are changing this one there, we know that this actually propagates changes to another one. So it becomes a dirty component as well. Have to update this again, and vice versa. So you have dependencies between your components, and you're modeling those using any kind of publish subscribe framework, announcements, and everything. And then the nasty thing comes in. It's a multi-user collaborative application. So having announcements and dependencies, messages thrown around between your components for your own session is great. But you also have to take into account that other people are working on the same calendar interface, and they're also changing things. And of course, the testers at our client, they were just sitting next to each other. I'm not seeing this. I'm not seeing that. Well, they actually saw that. Uh, but we actually wanted to avoid that, of course. So you have a collaborative interface. So we've been scratching our heads there. You have to take this into account. So you cannot just rely on your propagation there. If you want to implement such a 
updating mechanism, which just renders the components which have to be re-rendered, there are some pitfalls. So one of these pitfalls was that you cannot just rely on um, the changes inside of your local session. Also instance variable values, but for most C sites, uh, that would be uh, commonplace. So if you're doing a component update, you have to take care that you're not storing any old values in your instance variable. So you basically have to just reinitialize all those values again before you're re-rendering it. So the capturing of the concurrent changes was an issue. And then, that's nasty, you have to think about client-side behavior. You saw that I was able to move, drag, and drop the cells. I could do in-place editing. There actually is also multi-dragging, but I need my two fingers, and I cannot show, but you can drag multiple cells together, which you have to hold multiple keys. If you scroll the calendar, it will extend, and so on. There's a context menu, a right-click menu. All these things, if you re-render your component, some of them, of those JavaScripts, uh, have to be relaunched, others not. So you have to take care of that. You have to know, okay, I'm re-rendering, so I only have to do that. So we basically tried to create a big, good framework so we can use it everywhere and we're unable to. Because this same problem comes back in another interface and another interface of the application. But we could not come up, we could not create one single framework to create. So it's more like a design pattern at the moment. So whenever uh, I come back to it, maybe one day I will see crystal clear to me that you can actually just abstract this in a super class and just use it. So every updatable component will carry its HTML ID so we can refresh it client side. And we have a render content method, of course, which does the complete render. And we always separate this into a render internal. The render, component, the render content just generates your entire component, and the internal parts are in the render content internal. The script to update on, well, that's basically containing the jQuery script to refresh your inside. And the needs refresh, well, that's the clue to actually um, take into account concurrent changes. Because the needs refresh is something we specialize everywhere. Once, it takes a look at, have I received any changed messages? So if I, should I update? Have I received any announcements? And it goes to query the database. Has anything changed there? Should I maybe put in a value of another user? And that's basically, more or less, the implementation in many parts of our system. So it, it basically boils down to this. You have the update script on top. The update script, in the case of the calendar, is an Ajax script, which has launched and just iterates over all the cells, asks, do you need to be refreshed? And then I will actually launch your update script. The update script is just a, a jQuery load. So just replacing the internals. Because it's not general, sometimes we need to replace the entire component, sometimes we need to replace the internal, that's why we couldn't abstract this part. So it becomes a, a design pattern. Now, in order to make this a little bit more general, you could actually replace cells by children. That's the, the idea we're working towards. And another part would be, so if you need to um, replace your entire component, so also generate all the JavaScripts again. You can actually not just load, but just use the jQuery replace with and use the render content on instead of the render internal. And that's basically the, the same pattern we've been using everywhere. So that it becomes like you have your, your seaside components hanging as a nice tree, and you can just sell, uh, tell every node in the tree, well, uh, update yourself, and this one will actually propagate and only the necessary changes will get sent to uh, your client. Goes much faster, you don't need any re-rendering. There's much less querying going on, much less rendering. So that was able to give us a performance update of, I think, uh, five times uh, the normal one. So, basic message here is your own session changes, the session changes inside your own session, um, you can use true object-based propagation. I just use the publish subscribe mechanism. And for your concurrent session changes, well, you have to do manual handling. So that was the part on how we dealt with uh, just keeping track of how all the dependencies in a little part of the application, which is shown, how we can actually, well, get a grasp of that and do a very performant update. Another part, very small, but it's cool. There is a Seaside Dynamic SVG package. This was originally created by Holger Kleinsorgen. I don't know if Holger is here. I don't know the person. So this is on, uh, on Squeak Source. Uh, when we got to the package, it was only for Seaside 2.8, so we upgraded that one, and we're adding also the, the SVG jQuery plugin uh, to the system. And then 